Hi, I am Andrew Amati, and I am in the California University of Pennsylvania Honors Program, and I created a poster presentation about a humor theory. It's called incongruity theory, and it's about how Disney is funny for the entire family. Um, basically, to start off, um, in the movies that are produced by Disney, Pixar, um, it appears that they are designed to appeal to children as, I mean, they are children's movies. Um, but if you look at these movies through the use, like with the use of incongruity theory, um, which is seeing something differently in a situation than you would expect, um, that also creates a bit of humor and enjoyment for an older or more adult audience. Um, my research methods and goals my main goal was to see exactly what it was in these movies that made it so humorous for adults instead like why even though these are for kids do adults tend to enjoy them a good bit um, the answer that i arrived at was found with the use of the incongruity theory and that it's because the characters seem to slip in either jokes or uh, there are situations that will go right over a younger audience's head, but the adults will be able to recognize um, those situations and jokes, like I said. Um, some evidence to back this up. Um, the first movie that I mainly talk about is the movie Cars, and there are a lot of jokes in it that even when I was younger and a child watching it that I didn't understand and honestly they confused me even a little bit um like the first joke was when lightning mcqueen the main character wins a race towards the start of the movie two fans quite literally flash him um, but it's with their headlights so this is when you're viewing it as a child you just see two cars flashing their headlights at him. And at least myself, I didn't really think anything of it. But when you become older and you, you know, kind of see another uh, definition for the word flash, especially at uh, say car races and stuff like that, that, um, that makes you think a little bit because that's not, again, that's something you would not expect them to joke about in a movie marketed towards children. Because, I mean, that involves nudity and stuff like that and inappropriate public behavior. But when you're older and you see this happen, it's, you know, you're kind of shocked by it, which makes it a little humorous. Um, also, in that same movie, Lightning McQueen tells Mater, his friend, that he discovered that uh, Doc Hudson, a person in their town, was once... Um, he actually won three times this championship called the Piston Cup. So after he says that, Mater, his friend, says or asks the question, he did what in his cup? Um, if you don't understand, just um, say Piston Cup really slow. And obviously that is a joke about urine and the way they use that word. Again, you hear the word previous to that in the movie and you think nothing of it, but when they draw it out like that, again, you don't expect them to make a joke like that, I, I feel, uh, in a movie towards children, especially with the more vulgar sense of the word and not, you know, pee or something like that. Um, so, and also in the Toy Story franchise that was also made by Disney and Pixar, um, in Toy Story 2, the second one, uh, Rex, this the toy dinosaur, is chasing after Barbie's toy car. And he appears in the side mirror. In the mirror on it says, objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. And if you're not aware, this is a callback to um, Jurassic Park, to where there was an actual dinosaur in their mirror, and it said the same thing on it. Um, but you don't expect in a small ch children's animated film 
to see a connection to a movie that a lot of younger kids, at least at the time, may not have seen. Um, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily a shock, but you know, as as an older person, you're like, oh, okay, that's from you know Jurassic Park, and kind of provides some enjoyment there. Um, in Toy Story three, the Barbie doll meets the Ken doll for the first time. And she tells him, nice ascot. Um, when she says it at first, you hear the first part of the word ascot. And it kind of catches you off guard because you're thinking, oh, you know, what's she going to say? You're not allowed to say that. Um, so it may sound like she's referring to Ken's um, rear end. Because in that same shot in the scene, he's also wearing what seem to be fairly small shorts. So again, as a child, you don't see that situation and hear that first part of the word and think, oh, that's what she's talking about. You think you listen to the full word and then discover that it's actually the scarf that he's wearing. Um, in the same exact movie, actually, uh, Mr. Potato Head gets injured and he falls apart. So his arms and all that fall off of his body. And he somehow becomes a cucumber, puts his um, arms and hat and shoes on, onto that cucumber. And um, once he puts all that on, he looks like a, uh, let's just say a, a male's body part, which again, you don't expect to see that at all in a movie made for I don't know, kids 10 and younger. That's just not a joke you expect them to make. It's kind of low brow. It's, but you only notice it if you're older. And it's just, at least to me, it's so funny because it is incongruent with what you're expecting going into a movie like that. Um, now, um, I feel like some of the inspiration behind, I wouldn't say necessarily that kind of humor, but just humor for all in general may have came from Walt Disney himself. Um, he was known as a fairly funny man who tried to bring humor and joy and lightness into basically all that he did. A quote I took from the website about his museum was that he was known, um, sorry, <laughs> Walt's appreciation of humor also shaped a creative environment at work where humor, playfulness, and practical jokes were all part of the daily routine. So this is something that the founder of this company made sure was an active part of their everyday operations. It, it wasn't going to be just go in, go to a meeting and, you know, boring and budgets and all that kind of stuff. It, he, he really wanted to make sure that everybody was having a good time while they were there. Um, so in my conclusion... So I, I learned that in modern Disney and Pixar films, such as Cars and Toy Story, uh, they contain a vast amount of humor that you don't expect to see. And I feel like that is what will make it so funny. Um, again, especially if it's your first time watching these and you're with your child, you don't expect to see jokes such as that. Um, it catches you off guard and to them, it's fairly funny. Um, so that's the exact lane of humor and uh, comedy that makes them so great that even if you're watching a children's film and you'll see adult or sometimes you know crude or um, not appropriate humor such as the one with Mr. Potato Head that I, I feel like that's what makes it so great for adults. Um, again to Walt was a man who loved humor and liked making things for the whole family so not saying he directly influenced these movies but he influenced the company that made them. Um, so they may have had the approach of making it for the whole family based off of Walt's ideals as a founder of the company. Um, and honestly, with these jokes in mind, because it's not just in these movies, they're just the ones that I uh, pinned down, parents might actually enjoy some of these movies more than the kids themselves. So, and that's just because you go in and you see humor you don't expect, it's a good time, and it really just catches you off guard in a great way. 
Um, so again, I would just like to thank Dr. Murray for helping me with the project. And I would like to just thank the honors program for uh, helping me strive towards becoming a better student. So uh, thank you all and have a great day.